Hello everybody, this is Carmen with Elemental Designs and today I'm going to be creating a fairy jar. This fairy jar will be as part of a giveaway that I'm going to do for all the ladies that participated in my fairy jar swap. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoy this process. So what I'm going to be doing is pretty much decorating this jar. I'm just kind of looking for different little pieces um, to use in here. The little doll that you see there on the side um, I pretty much purchased at a pharmacy. I paid like a dollar to dollars for the little thing. It was like a keychain and I took everything off of her. Um, and pretty much what I've done is that um, I've painted her eyes, I've given her lips, I changed her hair, I've done a, a whole bunch of things to her to kind of alter her. Um, now what you see me doing is I, ha I have this ribbon. Um, as you can see it's like a brown ribbon it has like wire on it on both edges and it's got like this really shiny um, kind of rim around it so I kind of thought you know what this would be great for like a tree like a tree base um, it's got the right color um, and it's got texture to it because it's all very it's kind of wrinkly so I started to kind of just wrapping it around wrapping it around um, and no necessary like you know uh, you know way I just kind of you know just wrapped it and wrapped it and wrapped it and just kind of crinkled it um, even further just to give it a little bit of dimension and just some texture um, and just to make it look a little, a little bit different and my idea pretty much is to use this um, trunk if you will as the base for where I'm going to be adding some of the foliage um, you know some of the things that I'm going to be adding to this later so I decided um, pretty much to use a foam base. I had um, unmounted some foam stamps and I just had like these little foam blocks. So I just used that and just wrapped some of the same material around it just to cover it up. And I'm going to use this as the stand where my little fairy is going to stand on. I really love doing these kinds of projects. They are super, super amazing. Um, I mean, you can pretty much, your, imagina your imagination just kind of goes wild and you can pretty much create so many different ways. Um, there's just so many different styles, so many different ways that you can do this. Um, so, I'm um, just looking here to see <laughs> what else I'm doing. Um, I'm feeling that I need more, so I'm trying to see how I can add more to so just give it a little bit more volume. Um, and I just went ahead and just added a little bit more trim around the outside, kind of to cover up the whole you know just cover up the whole base all around it in the back um, and just kind of wrap it around the front just again to give it a little bit more more um, volume you know more definition and these materials with the wire with the wiring in the inside you know the wiring edge um, they're really really good for doing these kinds of things because you can actually manipulate the shape of how your ribbon looks um, you know you can crinkle it up um, you can do so many different things with it they're very very versatile and I was super lucky to have this in brown out of all colors in my stash. So that was really, really awesome. Now I'm grabbing some brown cardstock from Recollection. And I just pretty much cut like a rough uh, kind of oval. You can see how rough it is. And I'm, I'm just going to stick that to that just so that I make sure that I can press everything down. And I'm just going to trim off whatever excess edges on that cardstock um, so that it fits. You know, it kind of fits the mold and it's not popping out of anywhere. Plus, it'll, it'll allow, you know, for it to be balanced and supported in the bottom. It'll be nice and flat. So now I'm just checking out to make sure that she kind of fits inside. If you guys hear giggles, my daughter is in the background. So she's just having her own little conversation. She's in her own little world over there. Um, but I do hear her giggling, giggling every now and then. Um, So this is from Linda Hanson. Thank you so much, Linda, in case you watched this video. It came in handy. She sent me some happy mail with all kinds of trimmings. Um, You saw me flash her name there uh, a little bit earlier on in the video. Um, She sent me all of these things in a little happy mail package. It came all the way from Switzerland. Um, and I was just amazed because it came out perfect. It gave this little tree, tr tree trunk uh, an actual look and feel of it being like a little, you know, a little tree stump, right? Um, so it came in handy. Thank you. Thank you so much. It really gave my project just that extra um, kind of look. And I, I really like this. I really, really did like how this came out. Um, and since the mason jars are kind of, um, not so much that they're narrow, but it wasn't that wide, it, it would have really looked at a lot better if it was a lot wider, maybe double that size, um, would have really came out, you know, I would have been able to do so much more to it. Um, but the space was limited, so I worked with what I had and, and so forth uh, to do that. In order to do that, what I did is I just kind of pasted everything, hot glued everything to the actual, you know, tree stump 
um, that I was going to be putting inside. So I just grabbed some regular, um, you know, those, those cheap kind of flowers that you can buy like in Dollar Tree or some of your, you know, those kinds of stores. Um, and I pretty much took some of it apart. I grabbed the leaves. Um, and then I also took apart some of the other, you know, the other little pieces of it just to kind of incorporate those, um, you know, into, into it to make it look more realistic, more like a tree trunk. And here I'm just cutting up like um, little grass blades. Um, and I'm going to be using that to just add a little bit more background, um, you know, into the jar. So once it's in the jar, there's just a lot of stuff that's going on in the background with the limited space. But even though there's a lot of things going on, you can still more or less see the whole scene. So, you know, there's like I said, there's just so many different things that you can do with these kinds of jars. It's really, really fun. Um, and, you know, the, the, the limitation is to what you have. Anything that you have, you can turn into something that can be used in these jars. Um, they might seem a little bit intimidating at the beginning because you're like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? But it's not that hard. It really isn't. I mean, you just have to just, you know, take your time and just... But, you know, find some stuff, find some random stuff, um, and use it to the best that you can. And you'll be surprised what you come out with. It's all in the trying. And um, pretty much, I'm going to continue to just kind of cut up some of these little grass blades um, and just continue to, you know, tuck here and tuck there. And then I'm going to kind of grab some of the foliage that is there. And just see how it kind of all comes out. And I do have to remove some of the little stems here and there just to make sure that it kind of fits. But I really do like how um, this jar came out at the end. I was a little bit skeptical because I had created a Barbie. I didn't create the Barbie. I got one of those Happy Meal Barbies, um, the little ballerina ones. And I went ahead and I painted her and everything. And I was so ecstatic. I thought I was going to be able to use her. Um, but unfortunately, she was too large. She was too long. Even though she was the miniature, she was too long. Um, for the, She was like a pretty much lost inside of the jar. Like It was just too much. She was just too big for the jar. So I'm going to save her for maybe doing another jar when I find a bigger jar than this. So now I'm going to try to put this in here. And it's a good thing that it's nice and flexible. Um, because I was able to push it all the way. And I was worried at the beginning. I was like, oh no, I'm going to get this in here now. Um, but it actually worked out. Because to work inside of the jar itself um, can be a little bit difficult. Um, if you don't have the right tools. And I didn't have the right tools. I just had some little skewers and... Um, you know, and that's about it. So I was trying to figure out the best way to do this and not, you know, uh, not mess up what I had done. So it actually worked out. So I just, I'm adding some hot glue to her shoes to kind of stick her on the base. And I'm just making sure that she's in there nice, you know, nicely. And that, um, her, her wings that I had created for her out of lace and, um, were still there and everything was still copacetic. But I did end up noticing that she was a little bit too forward, so I will go ahead and add some hot glue um, just behind her and kind of pushing her back into, um, you know, in, into the background just so that she's more stable and she's not messing around. I'm going to be using those um, butterflies later on as part of the decoration on the outside. All right, so now I'm going to go into decorating some of the outside of the jar. And again, using some of the materials that uh, Linda sent me, I'm going to go ahead and um, just add some, some really pretty trimming. I love how this trimming came out. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And it just gave it that very special touch. Um, it gave me the feeling of almost like a trellis like it was just really really nice um, And I really really liked it. I love the way that it looks and I thought the two was not enough So if I have another piece left over why not go for three so I went ahead and went for it And it just pretty much encapsulated the whole thing so I loved it very very pretty and here I'm just gonna add some white roses um, these are paper flowers 
So I'm just going to add um, a few of them to each one of the strips um, just to give it a little bit more dimension and add a little bit more, you know, beauty to the jar and break up some of that pink too. I left a little bit of the stem on just so that I can kind of um, push it through some of the, the braiding um, just so that it has, you know, it's kind of nicely supported so it's not just stuck on the outside, it, it also has that little piece of wiring that I kind of just pushed through. So hopefully they won't fall off, hopefully, <laughs> right, we can always hope. Um, I'm not so sure about the, the stability of hot glue with glass. Um, because I know that like whenever I had like a little piece of hot glue kind of get stuck on the glass, it was very easy to remove. So what I will say to whoever receives this is just handle it with care, my love. Handle it with care. Um, and it should hopefully last you a long time. <laughs> I just always kind of work on a fly. Um, so even this jar that I've had there sitting for literally like two months um since i started the fairy jar swap i didn't create till today which i know it's like oh my god carmen you waited this long yes i did um but sometimes i work best like this and since i never have a plan anyway you know any time is creative time for me i can pretty much sit down at any point in time of the day and just come up with something um i just need to put some things in front of me to kind of get me going and that's why there's such a mess on my desk because i was just pulling stuff out of everywhere um but you know, however, how, however your creative process works, um, I just recommend that you just set yourself out some things, um, you know, depending on how you work and just, you know, let it flow. Don't overthink it too much and just let it flow. Especially if you've never done this before. I know I have, um, I'm going to be doing these, these jar swaps often. Um, I want to cover a lot of ground, <laughs> um, you know, within the next months, hopefully year. Um, and get kind of like a merry-go-round kind of going um, with these jar swaps um, so if you've never done them don't be scared um, just get yourself a jar anything with a lid um, and just let your creativity kind of flow just let it flow remember you can always take it off you can you know you can always remove a piece if you don't like it um, you can always add more things to it you know so there's never such a thing as too much. As long as you can see what's inside, as long as you can see, you know, if you're using, you know, a little doll or if you're making, you know, whatever it is that you have inside, as long as you can see what the feature is, um, the rest of it is good to go. There's also beauty and simplicity. I say that all the time. You don't have to go crazy um, and add like a gazillion things. I tend to do that just because I never know how to stop. <laughs> So that's kind of like, you know, my little pet peeve with myself. I, I have to learn a little bit of self-control. But I like to think at the end of the day, um, the pieces that I create do come out, you know, pretty good. So I'm not too upset about it. <laughs> but I do tend to kind of go overboard and I never know when to stop. That's, you know, but that's my problem, right? <laughs> not you guys' problem. So for the most part, um, just adding more trim and I'm kind of working on the, the lid here and just adding more you know adding more trim and not decorating the lid um the the mason jar is good for this kind of thing especially if you're adding light to it um and i'll show you guys a little bit moving forward what i did to the lid in order to incorporate um, some lighting into it because i will be using um some lighting that i got from the dollar tree i just wanted to see how it works overall and if i was able to kind of use it um i end up using it so it actually worked out pretty well and here I didn't really want to leave that red exposed so I just went ahead and grabbed some flops, some more roses that I had that had like a little touch of blue on them um, and I just kind of used them because honestly I haven't been able to find something that I thought that I can use those on just because they're dual tone um, and it kind of threw me for a loop so this is actually perfect I was able to use them and it still kind of matches the rest of the theme um, you know pretty decently So you're going to pretty much see me just go ahead and just add all these little rosebuds um, right to the top of this and just decorate it up real nice. Um, you won't be able to see any of that red by the time that I'm done. And I hope you guys are okay with me um, putting the videos fast. Um, I'm trying to do more voiceovers as you guys have noticed. Hopefully that, that kind of helps you out a little bit and um, 
you know how I get you know my things done my, my thought process behind everything um, I like to tell myself stories as to why things are the way they are and that kind of helps me um, to kind of create something that is based on whatever story I'm telling myself <laughs> Um, yes, I know some of you are like, Carmen, you're crazy. <laughs> so here I'm, I'm actually going to cut a slit into the, I cut a slit into the, into the lid, the part that goes, you know, in the, in, inside of the, the cover for the mason jar. And here I'm just using some jewelry pliers, um, to kind of bend those down, um, and get those kind of tucked away and get them nice and flat. So, um, when you receive this, just be aware that, uh, I did do that. So be careful with the inside of the lid. Because I did add some hot glue, but I had to take it off because it wouldn't close. So just be aware of that. So I went ahead and did that to both sides of the lid. So that I can kind of center um, the mechanism that turns it on and off. And put that right on top. And so here you just see me kind of fiddling with it and just making sure that um, it fits well. So that was kind of what I thought as far as doing that. Um, for, those, for that kind of lighting, just because it had... Um, you know the cord coming from each end and I didn't want to just string it all through one side and kind of put it awkward um, So I just kind of did that like I said here You see me kind of putting some hot glue because I was thinking about protection, but then I couldn't close it. So I was like dang it. I had to take all of that stuff off um, And I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna grab some like pink cardstock Sorry about that uh, from recollections again and just kind of cover up that lid and I'm just gonna do a slit. I'm not gonna fold it over or anything like that because I want that whole thing to be covered. Um, and here I'm just mounting it and then just passing it through those little slits. It's amazing the things that you can come up with on a fly. Um, and this is why sometimes I say that I'm like MacGyver because I sometimes don't even know what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it, and then I have it in front of me and I'm in front of a dilemma and I'm like, okay, this is how I'm gonna fix it and it just all comes together. Um, so I decided to go ahead and add some tool to the top just to give the top some decoration and kind of cover up the mechanism a little bit so it's not just like this little white, um, you know, pill shaped thing there. <laughs> um, and so I'm just adding tool all over the top of it and just kind of getting it, you know, all nice and covered, um, getting that, that centerpiece kind of nice and flush and at the same time giving it a little bit of accent. I wanted so bad to add these little figurines. I have this tiny little lion and I have this little lamb who's reading a Bible. They're super adorable, but I couldn't get them to sit flush. And I probably should have mounted them first and then mounted my little uh, mechanism. But the mechanism was more important than the little figurine. So it's okay. I'll use it on another project. So you'll see them again. So as you can see, the lighting is red, blue, and silver. Um, because I was going to have this kind of tucked away, I didn't feel the need to decorate it. Um, if you're going to have them exposed, you might want to decorate it unless that's your color theme, then it, fa it falls in perfect. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of glue them on there. So what I did is um, I first tried one way, but it didn't work too well because again, it didn't close. And part of the reason why it didn't close is because I had all of that hot glue on you know, the parts that I cut up. Um, but then I end up kind of putting it right dab smack in the middle after I removed that glue and then it was able to close perfectly. So if you're going to use this light and if you're going to do this kind of technique um, where you're, you're attaching the lights to the inside of this type of mason jar, just try to put your lights right in the center. Don't get any wiring um, or any little, you know, dimensional anything on that whole little red rim or pink rim. Uh, that little rubberized rim that's on the inside because that actually sits flush flush with your jar if you have anything on there it won't close properly so you see me I kind of uh, did I fix it already I think that's it yep I think I fixed it already I did that quick <laughs> I didn't even see it have well I didn't do it that quick <laughs> the, the putting it fast makes everything kind of quick so I'm um, now I'm just attaching those butterflies just to give it that that final little touch um, and I think that with these butterflies, I am about done with this jar. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free. If you have any suggestions, if you would like to see me do any other kinds of jars, or if you would like to, um, you know, have any other kinds of jar swaps in the future, um, let me know. I'm open for suggestions. Um, and like I said, I'm going to have these coming up, you know, more often. Um, I want to cover all the seasons, all the holidays. I want to do a lot with these. Um, jar swaps. I just think that they're beautiful and I hope that you guys liked it 
thank you so much here i was just kind of turning on the lights and you see it kind of flashing really fast um but thank you so much you guys bye